Hey guys, it's Twitter on Maxwell here and welcome to another TW episode. It is the big event, the showcase of the Immortals. It is WrestleMania 36, where it all comes together. So we've built up some good storylines over the course of the last few months. Some storylines even further in planning. But everything comes to a head today and some storylines starting off to kick us into the road to WrestleMania 37. So really excited with this show. Um, as I say, I felt like we did have a wee blip in booking the shows in between the Raws and Smackdowns. We're going to be back to doing pay-per-views only, so hopefully the flow of the storylines, momentum and character building and um, just really elevation of the wrestlers can really start flowing going forward. We'll probably have a drastic roster cut after this and um, a few wrestlers will switch brands. But no point in blithering on. We have got a lot to walk through here. It's a big show. It's in the Rogers Centre, formerly the Sky Dome, as we look for our record-setting crowd. So let's kick on, guys. This is WrestleMania 36. We start off in front of 61,464, the Rogers Centre. We start with our Women's Battle Royal. No trophy nine. We'll maybe start that off next year. But a B74 saw a pre-show about that had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat, and it was Becky Lynch who won the Battle Royal in 12.03. Other members of the Final Four were Melissa, Mia Yim, and Sasha Banks, with Melissa being the final elimination. Of course, Nia Jax got the most eliminations. B-74 is good, AJ looking stale, Liv Morgan and Kelly and English off their game. This had Abby Leif, AJ Lee, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Billy Kay, Candice LeRae, Carmella, Crazy Mary Dobson, Ember Moon, Emma, Evie, Kelly Ray, Kelly and English, Chris Wolf, Liv Morgan, Mandy Rose, Megan Kate, Melissa, Mia Yim, Nia Jax, Nicole Matthews, Nikki Cross, Paige, Peyton Royce, Sasha Banks, Sienna Allison, Taya Valkyrie, and the talented Rhea Ripley. You thought that was a lot of names? You're going to hate me when the Andre the, Memorial, uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal comes off with 60 in that. Very good few skill improvements there, but overall, just getting all these ladies on the WrestleMania pre-show, and a big win for Becky Lynch. We then had the tag titles in the line, it was a decent pre-show match, and it was the team of Dolph Ziggler and Jason Jordan defeating the Revival in 12.46, when Jason Jordan defeated Scott Dawson by pinfall. We make the second defence of the WWE World Tag Team titles. The B78 is pretty good. Uh, best performance was Dolph Ziggler, the worst was Scott Dawson. Quite a few skill improvements there, which is good to see, but the baby faces retain. I also have this weird feeling that I've put something stupid at the end of the paper. It's going to be something like somebody celebrates from like an earlier match that I just haven't moved up. So that'll be fun when we get to the end of the pay-per-view. Too late, no going back now. But this is going to be a lot of loading. So it was a pre-show match. It didn't have much heat. And it saw, of course, Braun Strowman win the Battle Royal in 2116. We all know that was going to happen. This was planned to absolutely just have Braun dominate. Final four was Shane Strickland, Shibata, and Bo Dallas. Shane Strickland was the final elimination. Braun get the most eliminations, and he wins the Andre the, uh, the Giant Memorial Battle Royal title. So we all expected it. B77, couple of guys off their game. Kushida suffered a concussion, which is disappointing. And a future face turn for Rich Swan was hinted during the segment. I'm um, just going to pick out some star names in there, not good for everybody, but you'd like so Van Helico, we had in there, as I say, Bo Dallas, Braun Strowman, Caristico, Chad Gable, Cody Rhodes, in there as well, just have a look, Heath Slater, Hideo Itami, Jushin Thunder Liger, Kalisto, Matt Riddle, Pete Dunne, Rich Swan, Ricochet, Sammy Callahan, Shane Strickland, Trent Stephen, Trevor Lee, Tyler Breeze, and Will Ospreay. So a lot of guys that will get good pushes coming out here, but just couldn't fit them in a card. And you look at these kind of guys in the Battle Royal and just think how big my card is, and the guys that, as I say, couldn't get into the, the proper main show. So hopefully we're on to a winner. So that's our last match of the pre-show. And we finish off, Braun Strowman just cutting how he's the champ. He told everybody he was going to win it. And he is going to go into the new WrestleMania year and win the WWE Championship and does his big brawn celebration. It's time for WrestleMania. 
So the show gets off to a strong start because the crowd hotter. Build up our three main matches, Pyro and of course America the Beautiful as well. We're hyping up Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose for the World Heavyweight Championship, our main event. Of course, we've got Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns for the Intercontinental Championship, and John Cena bids for that historic 17th world title as the WWE Championship's on the line. As he challenges champion Daniel Bryan. So in A91, let's get rolling into the show. First match with a decent matchup, and it saw the Masters of Wrestling, Cesaro and Chris Hero, defeat the Young Bucks, the Coffee Brothers, and Gallows and Anderson in 14-15 when Cesaro defeated Luke Gallows with the Neutralizer. The Masters of Wrestling make the third defense of the WWE Tag Team title. So B-77, it's okay, it's not amazing, it got the crowd hotter though. Hero with the best performance with a 70 and 89, sorry, Cesaro slowed down by that injury. Decent performance from Machine Gun Carol Anderson too. Anderson and Joe Coffey with skill improvements, but the plan is to stick with the champs, but we could see some manoeuvring of a couple of these teams come. Superstar Shake-Up. Next up we've got a promo from Tommaso Ciampa, just a disappointing B71. No longer writing out promos, so they're going to be off the cuff, but Ciampa here pretty much just documenting the feud between him and Johnny Gargano. How obviously they came so close to becoming champs, they finally made it. And then Johnny Gargano cost them by just not being good enough, which led to the Ciampa heel turn, pretty similar to real life. And he's here just to end his former friend's career and progress his solo career. So the match, B81, I'll take that. Probably could have been a bit better, but we hope both guys benefit. But B81 is okay considering both guys were off their game. Disappointing time to go off their game. Gargano with 76 and Champa with 68. So maybe this could have pushed into the A's. And it gained the storyline a bit of heat as well. But it was a decent matchup and Johnny Gargano picks up the win in 1631. With Hearts Donut. Champa improved rumble skills. Poor stamina for Champa, which is not going to help a, a, a long solo career going forward. They're struggling in a 16 minute match. Next up, it was a decent matchup that saw Matt Hardy defeat Jeff Hardy in 11 13 with a handful of the tights, a C63. It's our storytelling match of the day, so it's understandable this flop, but of course, we're going to have Broken Matt defeat Jeff. To get Matt over a bit off his game, Jeff slightly better performance. Jeff improving technical skills. A few negatives there. Penalised for not meeting the crowd, meeting the crowd's expectations. Did that make it a stipulation. Hardcore match. So yeah, we tried to make like a final deletion type thing, but uh, obviously that hampered the match as well. And hardcore base match was not going to play to match strengths. Although in real life, I think it would with the, the stuff we saw produced by him and. Brother Nero. After the match, just get Matt beating down Jeff. Well, other. He ate one, and it just proves that you know he's properly broken. And he's trying to break Jeff Hardy. Next up, we're in the cruiserweight division, and it was about to have some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd as we see Grand Metalite defeat Akira Tozawa, King Neville, and Manny Andrade in 13:46 when Grand Metalik defeated Akira Tozawa with the corkscrew somersault center bomb, making his seventh defense of the cruiserweight title. B76, him and Neville with the best performances. That's going to be the end of the storyline uh, at the moment. I can't confirm if it will definitely happen, but I have both Neville and Manny Andrade linked with moves to an alternative brand. Although, don't rule out 205 Live closing down in the cruiserweight division just moving completely. Um, it is getting stale. I am getting bored booking three shows rather than the two. But you never know. You might just see uh, new wrestlers come up from Lucha Underground and from NXT to fill out that roster. Or we could just sack everybody. So we'll see going forward. But Grand Metalik continues as a cruiserweight champion. Next up, a trio promo is from Kofi, Biggie and Xavier Woods. And they're just basically saying they will leave here the greatest trio in WWE history. And they will remain. I don't know if they're star champions. I think they are. But they'll leave here anyway as the trio's champions. That's bad. I don't even know who the champs are in this match. It's been a while. The match itself, done okay. And it was a New Day who were champions. And it was a decent matchup. I saw Big E in the New Day defeat Tonga Uso and Usos. And Jinder Mahal and the, uh, the Singh brothers in 11 2 when Big E defeated Sunil Singh with the multiple 
Breakers, the New Day making their first defence of the Trios Championship, a B78. Decent considering the overness of some guys. Um, probably going to spot up Tonga from the other Usos, let him do his own thing. And the Singh Brothers, well, we just wanted to give Jinder a matchup um, that wasn't in the main event. So, overall, okay. I'm quite happy with that considering the overness of some guys. So, yeah, New Day retain the Trios Championship. Next up, the over the top spectacular entrance with the Fireflies for Bray Wyatt, A Star 100, is WrestleMania. You've got to make Bray like a million bucks. And in a matchup that had great wrestling and good heat, Alistair Black defeated Bray Wyatt in 1818 with the Owari Death Foot Stomp in A93. Now, the reason I'm really happy with that is that it was without psychology. If that had the psychology in display, this could have been a 100 match, and with the performance levels in 83 and 91, possibly could have been an A100 match there. Anyway, storyline advances, great work by both guys. I'm hoping that really elevates um, Alistair Black going forward, and that could have been an A star match. So, very good performance. A WrestleMania caliber match for Black and Wyatt. Next up, we've got a promo for The Miz, A92, and he just says the usual spiel from The Miz. He deserves better. Why is he facing Sami Zayn? Let him defeat this loser and back to being a champion. I do have big plans for The Miz going forward. Uh, he is someone I feel that really does deserve a title, well, a main title in the real life. Not disputing the Intercontinental Championship at all, but he is really a wrestler that is at the top of his game in terms of promos, and I just feel, yeah, definitely should be a, a main event player. And his match actually flopped pretty badly, which is, well, it's not horrible, but it was about that had great wrestling and a good reaction from the crowd. The Miz did defeat Sami Zayn in 1610 with a, an illegal manoeuvre, basically using the ropes for leverage for the pinfall. Sami went 81, Miz went 85, storyline did lose a bit of heat. Probably just the length for the match, 16 minutes is a bit kind of meh, but a B, 79 nonetheless. Uh, but both guys, I do have plans for them out of WrestleMania. Uh, don't worry, Sammy. Make me a friend going forward. Next up, the US Championship was on the line and it saw Marty Scurll defeat Austin Aries in 1554 by pinfall with the graduation. Marty Scurll becomes your United States Champion. The 81's okay, double A win 87, a 74 from Marty Scurll, so a match up to build him. Uh, let's be honest. Austin Aries was not happy at losing, which is why he's got the low morale, which may be affecting the match a little bit, but we need to build new stars. Double A's 40 in this, so it made sense. So, good matchup. It's a start over. Next up, the European Championship saw a good matchup that saw Kota Ibushi defeat Zack Sabre Jr., Adam Cole, the champ, Rusev, Apollo Crews, and Eddie Edwards in 16-18 when Kota Ibushi defeated Apollo Crews by pinfall with a Phoenix Splash. A B plus 88, so this is phenomenal. This feud was all over the place, trying to book it in and make everybody face each other and establish good heat. But good um, performance from Kota, so he's going to put good matches on. It will elevate the title, keeps him away from the main title picture and can elevate some competitors as well. Weakest performances as expected by Apollo Crews and Eddie Edwards. Hoping for big things coming out of this for Rusev, Zack Sabre Jr and Adam Cole. But yeah, pretty good there. Skill improvements, couple in Rumble and a performance increase for Ibushi, and overall, a couple of inconsistencies, poor morale for Apollo Crews. He's had his run as an Intercontinental Champion, I did push him on SmackDown. Mm, we might probably just keep him on Raw. He's one of those ones I'm undecided on, but a good one for Kota Ibushi. Promo for AJ Styles, A91, just basically a verbal beatdown of Kerry Omega and Fergal Devitt. Going on the whole time, of course, that he ran the place in Japan, he took over where Devitt left off, then Devitt made stupid comments over here, he left and AJ Styles ran with the place again, so A91 for AJ, carries a bit of promo when he does a match unfortunately these days. And the match itself was good, and it was Fergal Devitt who defeated Kerry and AJ in 2030 with a double knee gut buster by defeating AJ. He carried the match. Uh, of course, Kenny's not so over. AJ's in-ring performance, he took a massive hit through the physical decline. 
Dev, it still gets the 91, despite being off his game, but great performance, storyline gained some heat. Good performance from Deva, and he's going to have massive things going forward. So good win for Deva, A91 again, it's good to see. And then we have the big one, and a superb matchup, no real build here, I just wanted to jump straight into it. John Cena defeats Daniel Bryan in 22.04 by submission with the STF. John Cena wins the WWE Championship title. A93. This was with lack of psychology and Cena visibly tiring. So this could have been even higher. But the storyline concludes there with John Cena as champ. 17 time champion. Greatest of all time. And yeah, you're wondering why is that in the middle of the show. Well, great win for Cena. 90 rating as he goes out celebrates with his, um, his dad, his family, um, Nikki Bella, I'm pretty sure they're still in this together. So yeah, they all celebrate and they go wild. So John Cena, 17 time champion, unbelievable achievement. Carry on though, the show must go on. Cena will go back to, and celebrate with his family. Shit will be, be all good there. Baron Corbin hypes up his promo with Randy Orton and A89. Um, he's obviously pissed off that Randy Orton keeps getting his way, kept RKO on him, and he just wants to end the Viper. Their matchup, actually very disappointing about the great wrestling, a great heat, good wrestling. Corbin did defeat Orton in 1738 with a handful of tights to get the win, but they just didn't click. It made for an awkward bout, which is disappointing at Mania, falling on a WrestleMania caliber main event. The B plus 83, and yeah, Corbin does benefit from it. Well, advance and go on going forward that's probably one not for the books there after this though we see john cena the 17 champ time champ in the back but officials have found him bloodied and battered and he's been the victim of a, a sneak attack he's, he's stunned he's a, he's it says he's conscious there but he's not he's all over the place he doesn't have a clue who has attacked him so our 17 time champion the greatest of all time has just been destroyed backstage more updates on this as they develop. That's a B plus 88 for Cena. Next up, and about they had superb wrestling and great heat, with Kevin Owens defeat Samoa Joe in 2045 with a package pile driver. Another great matchup in an A star 97. Considering the guys are 92 and an 89, maybe the booking of this was really good. So maybe that's what we're actually getting the benefit of a bit of long term booking with these feuds that's getting these matches these kind of ratings, but Joe improves technical, and hopefully that should boost both guys post WrestleMania. We then have another update, is John Cena leaving the ambulance, leaving in an ambulance, sorry, away from the arena. Just ignore the text there, but yeah, basically that's the angle I'm running here. John Cena is off to a local medical facility. Our champion, our record-breaking champion. Who could do such a thing? And that's a B plus. 86. Next up, but we have our co, not a co-main event, our co-co-main event. The co-main event is actually, I'm going to go with the ladies. I'm going to really put faith in them. But uh, Roman Reigns cuts a promo on this upcoming match with Drew McIntyre. Um, if you've been following the series, you all know the script with this one. Um, Roman was meant to go into Rumble, compete for that, with a chance to go for the championship. Drew takes him out just before the Rumble with a legit injury. And Roman Reigns has been making his life hell since. So an A-star 100. Storyline gains heat. And a match as expected. I, I had a feeling these two were going to make an absolute classic. Uh, and about the had superb wrestling and great heat. Roman Reigns does defeat Drew McIntyre in 34-15 by pinfall. Thus winning the Intercontinental Championship. So a great rating there in A-99. Snack the probably the announced team let it down a little bit. A 95 for Roman, a 90 for Drew. Both guys, I would say, get a great WrestleMania moment. Drew improves his flying skills. Maybe I should have made this the main event like I was talking to, to really raise the prestige of the IC title. But, yeah, excited to see what Roman can do with that title. And ace that 100. Roman did say he was going to destroy Drew and puts him through a table with the... Just say spears him. And that's an A-star 100. So overall, gold from these two. 
But we move on to the title for title women's championship match. Yep, Dana Brooke is co-main event in WrestleMania. This is happening. Uh, Dana Brooke cuts a promo hyping the match with Charlotte. Basically just, you know, the whole story saying, you know, she's a bodybuilder turned wrestler. She worked her ass off in NXT. She became as good as she became. She's got a chance to establish herself as the best ever. And, you know, she's not going to let Charlotte take that away from her. So, 89. Dana Brooke was good. Storyline advances with that. How will the match do? I've put so much faith in that. I mean, Charlotte is carrying an injury as well. They've never fought each other either, so I'm really unsure how this is going to go. Ah, B86. It, it might cost us a bit in the long term, but I felt they, they deserved this opportunity. But uh, about, they had great wrestling and good heat, and it saw Charlotte defeat Dana Brooke in 25 minutes and 3 by pinfall, which means Charlotte is the WWE Women's Champion, and she's also made the second defense of the SmackDown Women's Champion, Chip. Charlotte was slowed down by her injury, which made a 79 performance to Dana's 87. The lack of psychology probably cost this from being an A. It's probably the best, or up there with the best women's matches we've had so far. So they will get their WrestleMania moment eventually. And yeah, a few negatives here. Both ladies are inconsistent, but you know the, the performances they've both put in over the last six months to a year, they totally deserve to be the co-main cool event. Afterwards, Charlotte celebrates, which gets an A90. Looks good. That's all good to see. We head to our main event. Seth cuts a promo, saying this is his moment. He won. No, he didn't win the Rumble. He won a number one contendership match to get here, and that he is going to become the champion again. He was the architect of the Shield, and he's going to be the architect of Dean Ambrose's downfall. So A90 there. A91 for a spectacular over the top entrance. Don't know if he's going to quite set flames to the whole entranceway, burn it down in that. But the match itself, drum roll please. I'm hoping for about 92, 93. Can they knock it out of the park though? They have done so. Oh my god, if I'd have went with Sefi Dean followed by Drew and Roman, we could have been looking at a 899 rated mania. But regardless, about that had sensational wrestling and fantastic heat. Dean Ambrose cheats again to defeat Seth Rollins in 22:43 using the ropes for leverage. Dean makes the third defense of the World Heavyweight Championship. Great performance for both guys with 95. I mean, neither of these guys were proper in the title picture four or five months ago, but good feuds in the SmackDown ro on the SmackDown roster has got them and propelled them. And it's such a position and a storyline. Gained heat. Ambrose, since he's turned heel, has just been phenomenal. And we end the show. Dean celebrates. Code Booze. A 90. A heel win at WrestleMania. Doesn't happen very often. I felt like it was Ambrose's moment. That's his WrestleMania moment. Champ ends the show. It's going to take a wee bit of time to show up. So it's um, an A star 98. Could have maybe got a 100 with better match positioning? I really don't know, but I must say that's probably my best show, I think, of the save so far. Or has the, the one of the other ones get there when it was a um, 100 main event match? I'll have a look anyway at our top 100. It might be. But overall, fantastic. So top to bottom, as I say, there have been championship changes. A lot of guys actually ret in girls retaining as well. Yeah, I'm pretty solid show. I'd be really interested to know what everybody thinks, but that's that's good to see, I think. It was a good spotlight to give the women in the fact that we can get an A-star 98 with having the ladies in the co-main. certainly helps the, you know, their opportunity to co-main next year. I would not hesitate. But uh, I think you've really got to be serious here and go Seth, Dean, and Roman. I'd love to put Drew in there, but I'd get to go Roman. Um... You could even put Cena in here for you know declining physical ability to get that performance. The same with uh, Samoa Joe could have deserved this. Kevin Owens could have deserved it. There was just so many good matches. Seth's pleased. Dean's pleased. As is Roman. So overall, just a an absolutely fantastic show in terms of matches. Uh, a lot of good storylines that we can build coming out of here. And it's going to lead to me asking you guys that big question. So while it does the the loading here. 
we'll have a wee quick look and then I want to just start. I'm going to leave it to the end actually that big question because we all know what it is big trouble in all Japan uh, okay can we buy it can that be an option no it's not an option yet cool we'll keep an eye on that uh, Bobby Lashley's heading for injury but let's have a look here because she does going about for a wee bit let's have a quick look at that so he's out for two months and two weeks with a concussion that's cool Zero one, Ricky Marvin. No thanks. So Charlotte's back. Cesaro's back as well. And absolute success. Sixty one thousand six hundred. Uh, Four hundred sixty four fans is great. It's not sure I wanted. And five point two one, two point six million buys. It's wild. Absolutely wild. Actually, before we click on anything, money's obviously really really good. They just go to our top 100. That is the best show I've ever produced. Wow. It uh, beats Fastlane. I would imagine they're pretty similar. It's hard to tell because it's such small rating. Um, but I think that is probably by far the best show we've ever done. So who'd have thought that? Uh, as I said, I don't think we've done anything recent. If I quick look at that again, sorry. Uh, I'd know yeah, it was pretty solid as well, actually. But apart from that. It's mostly been quite a few years ago, 2018, there's a couple of 2019s, but mostly nothing recent, so delighted with that. Quite a few people unhappy, as I say, I'll, I'll get the morale sorted, as I say, we'll release a few people as well. So Kenny King's got an offer from New Japan, that's cool, he can, he can go if he wants. Uh, first in the US, first in Canada, Mexico and Japan. Of course, just expiring, uh, explaining those to a fit. Smackdown Live, I can sort that. Austin Aries likes Atomic Boy. Becky Lynch likes Akuma. Pete Dunne doesn't like the Destroyer Sawyer South. And neither does Kelly in English. Bo Dallas doesn't like Flamita. This is a lot of opinions. Matt Hardy doesn't like Cian Allison. Lindsay Dorado. Chad Gable doesn't like him. And Fergal Devitt likes Akuma as well. There's the Kushida injury. And Paige likes Megan Kate. So let's have a look here. Drug test was 12k. It was pretty much the full roster. 5.21 there, and it's just going to be a lot of guys saying, "Oh, I'm in the my momentum's in the toilet." So these are people that maybe need to get a couple of wins going forward. And Roman Reigns doesn't like Ricochet. Hmm. How do you fancy a trade to SmackDown Ricochet to face the big dog? Could be something to look out going forward. And of course, that was if you were at the last episode. Hyman Page gets his main roster contract so 4 point, uh, 475 million in the bank so we don't need to worry about anything like that we're always going to be making money not really making any losses we're in a good position here just to keep our ratings high i'm quite happy at international and finance as you can see 16 million so yeah good profit so far uh, the last thing i just want to quickly check because uh, it has been a long long episode and i appreciate that uh, is just going to be the main eventers and their overness. So if we just quickly go to our main event talents. Quite a lot to run through, so we'll do it as quick as we can. So roughly early 70s for Adam Cole, um, Akira Tozawa early 73s, AJ 80s, and Helico 66s, Apollo, Apollo even just under 80, Listener 85s, Baron Corbin just under 90, Biggie low 70s, Odalis low 80s, Braun Strowman, Braun needs a big push, especially for the wages he's on, so expect big things to get Braun back. Bray Wyatt 80, Cesaro 70, Charlotte's still up at the 85s, 86 level, Chris Hero 70s, same with Crystal Daniels, Dana Brooke, high 80s as well, so hopefully, um, as I say, if we can get more talented women wrestlers up in terms of psychology, we may see other people reach that level. Daniel Bryan, disappointingly, just an 86, we need to work on him. Dean Ambrose, 91, Ziggler, 70s. Drew, up at the 90s. El Taxano, 75s. Fergal, just under 90s. Grand Metalik, under 80s. 71 for Jeff. 80 for Jindar, 79. John Cena, 90s. So no one's really at that elite level, despite the amount of good matches we had there in terms of overness, though. Johnny Gargano, just under 80. Shibata, just under 70. Kelly in English is roughly 73s. Kenny's just under 80s. Kevin Owens is only 87. Neville just under the 80 mark as well. Bushy, I'd say 86, 87. Skirrell, 71. Randy just high 80. Uh, 
low 80s, I would say, sorry. Roman 93, 92, so he's the most over guy. Rusev 82s, Sammy 78, Joe 82, so he's in a massive decline. Seth Rollins 92s, Shane Strickland's doing okay. Miz is a bit everywhere. There's 91s, there's 89s, there's a 93, and then there's a 79 in the Great Lakes. Strange. Champ is okay. Zack Sabre Jr. just doesn't seem to lose over this at 89s. So yeah, we don't have any that's, I'd say, rock level. 93, 90s that are good, but we could get people. Jinder, remember, at one point was 100 over everywhere, so there is a chance we can get these people up to that level. So before we finish it, we'll just look, quickly look at our creative meeting. The main guys, Dean Ambrose, followed by Reigns, Rollins, Orton, and somehow, still Dolph Ziggler. Should we have one more push for Ziggler? Let me know if you think we should or not. Next big things remain to be Paige, Will Ospreay, Akuma, Flamita and Patrick Clark. Hot prospects, Mark Coffey, Patrick Clark, Daichi Hashimoto, Abby Leif and Akuma. Top the top, best promo talkers, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Triple H, John Cena and Paul Heyman. The showstoppers, Seth Rollins, Caristico, Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler and Randy Orton. Your ring generals, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Kota Ibushi, Zack Sabre Jr. and Davey Richards. Who's hot? The wave of momentum at the moment is with Chad Gable, Lamita, Jinder Mahal, Kenny Omega and Matt Riddle. Who's basically losing all the time? Paul London, Simon Gotch, Cherry Bomb, Enzo Amore and Aiden English. Him decline, unfortunately, is Triple H, Chris Jericho, Jushin van der Liger, John Cena, the champ and Hideo Itami. And your hidden gems that we could sign but we're not going to. Jesse White. Brooke Adams, Johnny Aminga, Brian Reeves, and Ken Don, aka all former WWE wrestlers. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I'm going to ask the big massive question first. Who do you think attacked John Cena? What do you think this means for the WWE Championship as the record champion is now possibly on the shelf for an extended period of time? And what, sh- what basically storylines do you feel will happen going forward? What would you like to see? And who would you like to see get a push going forward? So thanks for tuning in, guys. Let me know what you thought of the card. Let me know how your own shows are going as well. Um, have you ever booked a, a really, really successful Mania? I'd like to see the, the main event matches and cards you've booked. Let me see all that. And yeah, as always, if you could drop a wee like, it's deeply appreciated. Any comments on how we can improve the series. And of course, check out the other bookers on the Fantasy Booker subreddit and the Grey Dog Software forums. And of course, my recommended videos section so just watching guys take it easy and see you all next time for some more tw as we start the road to wrestlemania 37 peace